Food Fridays on Fox 24 News Now. Brought to you by U.S. Food Chef Store. Great food, wholesale prices. It is true that good wine needs no bush, but in this case, the desire for an education in what's good has led us to California's wine country. And on this week's Food Friday, that's where we find a rarity in and of himself, Mark DeVere, a master of wine at Robert Mondavi Winery. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Leila. A look at that beautiful setting. Can you tell us where you are? I'm standing behind Robert Mondavi Winery, so in Oakville, right in the heart of Napa Valley. It is stunning there, and it looks like the weather is cooperating as well. Would you say that this is perfect weather for wine growing? This is pretty much a perfect day for ripening grapes. It's in the high 80s, low humidity. The sun came out uh, from uh, out of the marine clouds about an hour ago, and we got a beautiful, gentle breeze. And that's what makes California's wine country so perfect because the climate, the topography. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the history of Robert Mondavi and, and how California's wine country came to be? Absolutely. So uh, Robert Mondavi is known as the man who was the real pioneer of great wine, fine wine in Napa Valley. And in, in many people's minds, put Napa Valley on the world wine map. He was actually born in Minnesota to an Italian family, moved to California. The family was in the sort of everyday table wine production business. But Bob recognized exactly what you just said. We have the perfect climate here and the perfect soils. And the grapes, these are not necessarily native grapes. Have they been brought in and cultivated over the years or where did they originate? You're absolutely correct. All the great wines of the world, basically, and certainly in California, are made from the same grape varieties that make great wines in Europe. So they probably originated in the Eastern Mediterranean, but they first grew to prominence and fame, making the famous wines of Europe. And then they were brought to California, mostly in the late 19th century. Let's talk a bit about you, Mark, because like I said earlier, you are a rarity. You're a master of wine. Can you tell us what a master of wine is? Well, Master of Wine is really a qualification, and it's uh, considered one of the hardest exams to pass in the wine trade. And it covers everything from understanding the global issues of everything in wine, from planting a vineyard, growing grapes, growing better quality grapes, harvesting, making wine, aging wine, maturation, quality assurance, packaging, commercialization, legal issues, social issues, historical issues. If you pass that exam, you're, uh, you're invited to join the Institute of Masters of Wine. And I think there are about 380 in the world now. So it, cool. it's, as, it's as rigorous as becoming a surgeon. <laughs> For a lot of people, it seems a little bit intimidating. You know, wines, there, there are so many of them, for one thing. And to know a good wine from a not so good wine doesn't necessarily depend on the price. Uh, but what would you say to somebody who's interested in making that foray into drinking wine? Don't be intimidated. Pull the cork on a bottle of wine. And this was one of Mr. Mandavi's great messages. Well, I'm ready to enjoy some. How about you? Absolutely. You've provided me with three beautiful bottles of Robert Mandavi wine. The first one is a Fumé Blanc, and that's something that I had just recently tried. And I have to say, it's refreshing. It goes with so many different things. So Fumé Blanc, thank you. You're absolutely right in calling that. Fumé Blanc is just another name for Sauvignon Blanc, which you may well have seen or had before. But the reason we call it Fumé Blanc is in 1966, when Mr. Mondavi founded his winery, Sauvignon Blanc in California was always made as a cheap, sweet wine. Mr. Mondavi knew that it could make dry, high-quality wine. So 1966, he made a dry, high-quality wine and then basically had to find a way to market it or sell it. Shall we take a sip? Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. You tend to hear people talking a lot about different notes in wine, fruitiness, oakiness, so on and so forth. Um, what am I supposed to be tasting here? Well, you will hear people talking about that. You're not supposed to be tasting anything. You're supposed to be tasting a beautiful, enjoyable sensory experience. If you wanted to start to recognize and narrow down to certain features, this wine's a blend of two of our vineyards, one on the other side of Napa in Stag's Leap, and the Fumé Blanc in that vineyard gives lovely citrus flavors. I always think of lemon, lime, grapefruit characters. And some of the fruit comes from the vineyard right behind me, our Tocolon vineyard in Oakville. And when the Sauvignon Blanc or Fumé Blanc grows here, it gives more stone fruit, peach nectarine sort of flavors. And 
although this is fermented in oak barrels, they're only old oak. So when you use old oak, you don't get any oaky flavor. So you shouldn't be getting any oaky flavor, just that pure citrus and stone fruit from the vineyard. Well, it is absolutely delicious. Stag's Leap, another fantastic label. While we come back, we're going to be trying the other two, which are reds, my personal favorite. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We've been chatting with Mark DeVere, a master of wine at the Robert Mondavi Winery, and that is where he joins us today. And we just had our first taste of the Fumé Blanc, the type of glass. Does it matter the type of glass that you're drinking out of? My first answer is no. My second answer is maybe. So <laughs> On, do you need the right glass? You can pour wine into a jam jar and drink it if that's all you've got. And the most important thing is the wine. However, when it comes to getting the most out of your wine, you could choose to invest in beautiful wine glasses. If you go to fine dining restaurants, you'll know they have beautiful wine glasses. And it's not just because they look nice, but really nicely designed glasses with a thin rim, I believe do help the wine taste even better. And in order to realize all those flavors, to bring out those notes, um, for a vintner, a winemaker, how do they decide how the grapes are going to be treated? The most important place to start is in the vineyard. And this is where most of the flavors that we want are generated, as it were. And the different, so choosing the variety and choosing where you plant that variety is going to give the first sort of shaping of what flavors will be available in the grape. Then how do you decide what to do with it when it comes into the winery? That's a combination of experience, sometimes tradition. A lot of European regions, it's very traditional. Many California regions are much more experimental. Well, let's move on to the Cabernet Sauvignon, shall we? Yes. All right. So that's this one right here. This is uh, the middle one, uh, 2017. Yes. Uh, another question for you. Was 2017 a good year? And what makes a good year? Well, we're fortunate in California that most vintages should be considered good. The idea of good or not good vintages stems a lot from cooler regions uh, and especially uh, maybe European regions where they're a bit more marginal. And in not good years, it was difficult to get the grapes ripe or it might rain on the harvest and so on. In California, we have beautiful sunny days most years in summer. Vintages will be different and they might might be more or less to your preference, but we have a fair degree of consistency. 2017, I think, is a beautiful year for my style. Very intense, but very fresh. Mm. And, and when you do swirl it around your glass, you can tell that it is opening up and you can smell all the different uh, nuances of the wine. It's not as aggressive as some other red wines I've tried. Uh, but this this has a nice balance to it. Reds are, are some of my favorite. I love the the cherry notes and reds and, and things like that. But uh, this is quite lovely. Thank you very much. And again, it's got presence in the palate. So a certain sort of intensity, but exactly what you were saying. Mr. Mandavi used to say great wine should be gentle. It should be friendly. And I think that's what you're noticing here. So it's definitely intense, got great concentration. And flavors that evolve across your palate from the moment you take the first sip, to me, the flavors keep changing for 10, 20 seconds afterwards. Indeed. And they say temperature. Temperature makes a difference and that uh, Americans tend to drink their whites too cold and their reds too warm. So what would be the proper temperature to drink something like this? Well, without getting too hung up on putting a number on it, I would usually say drink your red wines noticeably cooler than whatever your room temperature is and drink your white wines a, a few degrees warmer than fridge temperature. Let's move on without further ado to the piece de resistance. This is your reserve. We haven't been talking about cost, but I think in this case, uh, why don't we? Because this is a beautiful bottle of wine. Tell us more about this one. This is really Mr. Mandavi's vision of making wines in the company of the great wines of the world. And yes, the, the recommended retail price for this is I think $178 a bottle, but it's a wine that we would serve on the same table as any of the great wines of France or of Europe or anywhere else in the world. But it, it has a, a richness to it that I think maybe the Sauvignon, the Cabernet Sauvignon was a little bit on the lighter side. This is quite different. It's much richer. It's got we sometimes use the word complexity, which means the flavors evolve more. It's going to give you more interesting flavors. And although it's richer and in some ways we might say more powerful, I think 
it's got more of that gentleness and friendliness you were talking about. Uh, well, Mark, this has been a fantastic education. Thank you so much to your health. To your health. Cheers. Cheers. We're back after this.